Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a complete walkthrough of my 1648 Fisher Marine electric boat build. I'm going to leave links to everything that we used in this boat. About 98% of it came from uh, tbnation.net. The rest of it came from either Amazon or directly from the company that I purchased it from. So all those links are going to be in the description below. And we're also going to make videos on some of these parts specifically in the future. To start off with, this boat measures 16 feet long from the transom to the bow, and is 48 inches wide from down in this corner all the way over to the same corner on the other side. So the trailer has been pretty much completely rebuilt. We did take off the side bunks. We extended the tongue and added the Fulton uh, swing away tongue trailer. We replaced the two inch ball hitch with a new two inch ball hitch. The winch is the same, it's the same old winch and so is that little bumper piece, but the jack is new and all the trailer lights are new. I also have not upgraded the wheels and tires yet. I made new step pads and added the turf to them. And then we also added the tie downs uh, to the trailer into the boat. The bunks with the gator back bunks, these are the clear ones. And we also have the LED light strip in the middle so these things will glow at night we just got the cool white ones underneath the boat we did fastco super slick i uh, will used i think one quart uh of it for the entire bottom which i did end up running a little bit low on one side but it did end up covering the entire boat so realistically if i was to do it again i'd probably get two quarts this is one hit wonder uh desert sand paint it is a no primer needed paint. We did two coats of that, and then we came back over it with the gloss clear coat, uh, which Chris was not too happy about, but I really liked the way the gloss came out. The paint that we used on the trailer is just regular Rust-Oleum spray to cover the whole thing, and then we did a gloss uh, clear coat over that as well. We decided to go a little crazy with some graphics. Chris wanted to do some type of, of peel tear thing and then have the last, I gave him the last four feet to do whatever he wanted with it. And we came up with this camo pattern that really matches the cobblestone hydro turf, which we'll talk more about here in a minute. And we actually did that before we did any of the clear coat over the one hit wonder paint. So everything is, is gloss clear. Starting from up front, we have three extremely obnoxious nylite uh, LED light bars. These things are bright as the sun. It is insane how much light these put off. It was very tricky to get the mount made and, and have all this sitting up here um, while still having space for the uh, nav light, uh, the puck was kind of secondary to everything after we put on the trolling motor, but that actually ended up being a really good place to put it. The bow plate, okay, I, I've come to realize that a lot of guys don't know or understand what a bow plate is, so I'm gonna do a full video on that later, but my bow plate basically extends from here, goes straight across to where the trolling motor's sitting, and then kicks out to the side. We did this for a few different reasons. I knew I wanted the cooler in here, so we designed the whole bow plate around having the cooler in place. And the reason I wanted the cooler up here is because I knew we were gonna go all electric in this boat. So with the lower horsepower electric outboards, we know that you need to have a lot of weight towards the front of the boat in order for the motor to run at its max capacity. So I wanted to try doing the weight offset with a cooler all the way up front. Utilize the space up here for something useful. I'm also gonna be able to stand on this cooler for bed fishing or, or sightseeing, uh, different spots and stuff like that. So it gives me a little bit of an elevated platform to really see out into the water. But this cooler is a Eco Smile. Uh, I believe it's a 20 or 30 quart cooler. It's not extremely big. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. I did get it off Amazon. I do have a... Uh, drop-in light this is a led light that i got off amazon that is designed to drop into the ice and still shine and work so i do have that in there i also added in the uh, little net so i can hold a, a, a koozie so we got the gator back koozie in there and also some of the liquid ivs i don't necessarily want you know down in the ice but nowhere else in the boat either but you might be asking how to drain this thing so underneath here is the drain i can loosen that drain cap and let the water drain down into the boat and it'll go straight down to the subfloor and out to the back but this cooler is also removable so it doesn't necessarily need to be stationary in the boat it, it can lift out on the opposite side over here we have my electrical panel we have a 12 volt and 16 volt battery on off switch an eight gang switch panel which currently runs the uh, rooster tail light which is in the back cabin lights the live well light cockpit lights the main cabin lights front and rear 
nav lights, and the manual switch for the bilge pump. To the right of those, I have a temperature sensor. Okay, there are two temperature sensors installed in the live well tank. I'm doing this as an experiment. I'm really just kind of curious to see what the temperature is in the live well tank and if that matters or not, or if there's a difference in, in temperature between the left and the right side. And then just below the digital temp sensor, we have a voltmeter with a two USB port. So if I need to charge anything, I have the option to do so right up there. On the other side of the bow plate is a 24 volt, 80 pound thrust Ultrex. This is one of the lower end models. It's not the new Quest or anything like that. This is technically my bow plate down here, but we did have to fabricate a bracket for the trolling motor to sit on so that it actually sat level in the water with the boat. Getting all of this whole bow plate structure figured out with all the different angles and everything we were up against was was definitely time consuming and challenging but in the end it came out looking very beefy i feel like i, I absolutely love it some more pieces to this trolling motor that make it pretty much all complete are going to be the uh, the amp marine cable clips we are running pan optics so instead of zip tying or which you definitely don't want to do the zip ties but instead of electrical taping the wire up i use these amp clips for the ultrex they do spin a little bit which is kind of nice actually when everything starts getting a little twisty. But then there's a main run through right here that bolts to the motor. And then we have another one up top up here. So it came out very clean. And then we also wrapped all that together with our TB Nation Outdoors trolling motor cable wrap. Uh, we have two sizes of these. This is the larger, longer size, and it fits perfectly on this Ultrex pedal. So I call this the kickstand. I know that's not what it's called. That's just what I refer to it as. We also got a bumper from Ant Marine uh, so that you know it won't damage the turf or anything. It All right, so moving on back, we have the premium recess foot tray. This is a four inch deep recess foot tray that allows the Ultrex pedal to sit about three quarters of an inch above the deck. So it's still very close to that same deck height. We have two cup holders under here and either scissors or plier holders in there, which at the moment is not very accessible i'm kind of throwing baits up underneath there we did install the uh, gen 2 double graph mount with all the accessories that you can get on it so we have the plier and scissor holder on the left side we have another cup holder on the right and then on the back we have the puck attachment we have this on here to really kind of sh demo this for you guys and show you what it is and how it gets put together graph wise we have a garmin 106 sv up top and the 93 sv on the bottom which I actually really like this combination right now. Running pan optics on the 10 inch and doing mapping and side imaging on the uh the nine inch and by the way this is not a color that you can get in this premium foot tray uh, we did sand this down and paint it to match the boat on this seat base post i have another amp marine product to be honest with you i completely forget what this is called however it's just a little cap for the seat base hole so you can pull this out you can get them in a couple different sizes and it just fits down into your seat base post for me this is pretty important because the bottom of my seat base just goes straight into my compartment which we're gonna talk about next. I'm gonna link these down in the description, but I can keep this on here so that water doesn't go down into my dry hatch. So pretty cool thing, really, really necessary for my boat because of the way that we built it, but um, I actually like it. Then you can just put it on there and snap it in and it's not gonna go anywhere. The day box. I've never been on the day box train as far as something that I felt like needed to be in a boat until I had a day box. We do use these white cap latches that has not changed for us. I did not use the locking ones, but this little 10 by 12 inch dry hatch that is three inches deep with a box is absolutely amazing, especially when you have a very minimalistic layout. Um, I don't have a whole lot of places to put small things, so this thing has been a lifesaver. We're still in the winter months here, so I have some wool gloves in here. I keep my remote for my uh, iPilot for the Ultrex in here. I've got some hot hands, boat registration card. I have my notes, my, my fishing log, which has been helping a lot. I keep my tournament rules in here. So if you're interested in fishing in Georgia, we have the electric fishing series, a pocket knife, a lighter, spare sunglasses. This is the charger for my Bubba scale. And this is a charger for something else. I can't remember right now off the top of my head but i have something else that i keep in the boat that needs to be charged every once in a while so i have these in and these are usb so i can use them over there on the usb uh, voltmeter also i have one dude wipe in here and then installed in the bottom of this box is the aqua amp wireless phone charger so i run iphones so obviously these ports aren't going to work for that uh, but i don't need them because i can just set my phone on this uh 
aqua amp pad and it will charge my phone they are a pretty new company to the market and they have a bunch of different versions of these this is just the one that i like the most i'll link them all in the description you know it gives me also a place to put my phone while it's doing it it's not just chilling out on the deck so i really like that right up here we have a single onboard charging port so my extension cord just plugs right into here which is connected to powerhouse's brand new 12 and 24 volt split onboard charger so it's actually sitting right up underneath here so the cable runs and connects to the back side of this and that way i don't have to go digging through my one hatch to charge both of my batteries okay let's go ahead and talk about the next big eye-catching thing on this boat which is going to be the eva foam this is a brand new color from hydroturf called cobblestone when we first got this color i absolutely fell in love with it i i'm a huge fan of the browns tans and blacks we wanted to scan the boat we knew that we wanted custom routed eva foam but i didn't have any design preferences or anything like that but i knew i wanted this camo pattern so we reached out to them to see if it was possible to do the cobblestone over the black with the knurled finish. So the knurled finish are these little diamond textures that are in the top of the turf. It's very subtle. When you're up close and personal, you can definitely see the difference and it looks so good. And you can get the CNC routed stuff done at either our Midwest or Southeast location. Switching sides here, we have the uh, boat buckle. This is not extremely necessary for me, but I don't have a rod locker, as you can see. So I w wanted to put this in here just in case. We did scan around it, so uh, it does recess itself pretty nicely into the turf. This thing's pretty easy. Um, it just retracts onto itself, so if I don't need it out or don't want it out, it, you know, it's off to the side. It's not bothering me, but um, I really like it. So just in case I'm traveling or something, bring a few extra rods. I can always uh, strap them down up here and not have to worry about it. All right, let's get on to the dry hatch. This is the only dry hatch aside from the day box in my front deck. Once again, a white cap latch lifts this thing up. It's just one solid hatch that accesses everything underneath the front of this boat all the way to the bow. This hatch was originally purchased to be a rear deck hatch. I wanted to run the e-propulsion uh, battery pack or when I purchased the lid that's what I figured I would be running and that battery pack is massive too it's heavy so I didn't want to have to finagle that battery down into a tight compartment with a small lid. I believe it's like a 27 by 48 and so far I love it. The only thing I would do different at the moment is not make it as wide. I probably would have come in about three or four inches on each side to give me a little bit more deck space to, to set rods onto because I obviously don't have a whole lot of room right here. Aside from that, having this one main large hatch has been amazing. It keeps everything simple, easy, clean, and cheap. So let's go ahead and talk about that because it's going to get into cost and why I do only one hatch. The white cap latches are about 30, somewhere between 30 and $50 a piece. So the more hatches you have, the more latches you need. I knew I was gonna need two struts, which is fine. These are 17 inch, 40 pound marine struts. And also I had to get the mounting brackets, one for the bottom and one for the top. It is very nice having these two. They're not too strong. It's not too bad getting this lid open and closed. So the more lids you have, the more you're spending on those little accessories that you don't necessarily think about when you're doing the layout and wanting all those different hatches. That's always something to keep in mind. We are running a 12 pin fuse block. And then in the middle of that, we have a 12 volt, 100 amp hour powerhouse lithium battery. This 12 volt lithium battery is powering everything electronically in my boat, aside from the trolling motor and the I'm going to make another video in the future on how we got away with a few things because some of you are already catching on that we, you know, there's a 12 volt battery and a 24 volt battery. So how do I have a 16 volt on off switch? That is a 24 volt, 60 amp hour powerhouse lithium battery that is powering my trolling motor and one other main component. I'll go ahead and put up on the screen the amount of battery that I have left after an eight hour tournament. That should give you guys an idea of the amp hours, what I'm running and what I'm actually leaving with when I leave the lake. In this center post right here, we have the uh, circuit breaker. That is a 70 amp TB Nation circuit breaker. It's obviously the, the on off power button for my trolling motor. So all I have to do is flip this bar up 
Did you hear the trolling motor kick on? Um, that brings power to the trolling motor and the other accessory that the 24 volts hooked to. So as you can see in here, we have tons of room for storage. This product right here is a, uh, a just a divider that I purchased from Amp Marine. I love it. I thought it was big when I opened it, but it actually looks very small in this in this compartment. So all of my tackle boxes fit so far, aside from this Academy one. And uh, I'm actually not too happy with that tackle box, to be honest with you. So I'm going to end up replacing that. I also have uh, my tackle bag in here that's just full of plastics. And then I have a whole nother area on the other side for... Uh, co-angler to throw his stuff in there the bubble scale mount is also a mount from uh, amp marine which i really like uh, i put one up there i have another one which i'm debating on putting on this vertical wall in the back but for right now that thing works perfect right there holds it i really like it the bubble scale itself very nice uh haven't caught anything worth putting on that scale yet but I hope to one day because if not, I'm going to feel stupid for paying $200 for that scale. On to the cockpit. I just really like having the large open cockpit area. So this one is about 47 to 48 inches wide, which is extremely big for most of our boats. But I also don't have any rod lockers. Okay, I have two catwalks. This is a catwalk and then we have another one over there. But I just made these little cutouts for the rods to slide in and out of. And the main reason I did not want a rod locker is because I was being very picky with my weight. The downfall, obviously, is that my rods are exposed, showing. If someone really wanted to, they can come over here and steal them. So I, you know, I'm gonna have to make sure that I pull all that stuff out when I don't need it in there. But as far as fishing wise, I love having these two areas. I got, you know, both sides I can put rods. So moving on to the rear deck, we, uh, you'll see on this vertical wall, there's kind of a lot going on. We'll start off over here. With the forward and reverse lights so those three uh, nylights lights that i showed you up front this is the switch form right here in the back on the transom we have two pod lights which are made by flashlight and those get turned on and off from here those are very nice to have when backing down the boat ramp early morning on the opposite over side over here we have all of our live well controls so we have the three-way valve for the flow right premium kit which i'll leave linked in the description below to the left of that we have the timer so you can set your timed delay as well as if you want the pump on off or in timer mode and then to the left of that i have something completely new and completely unnecessary that i added to this boat testing purposes really i was just kind of curious it, i call it the g juice jizzer basically just a windshield wiper reservoir tank uh which i'll leave linked in the description below as well it's very cheap uh and it, it will manually shoot g juice into the tank whenever I tell it to. So I just got to hit that button, hold it for as long as I want. The longer that I hold it though, the more G juice it's going to pump into the tank. And then below there, we have another amped marine product, which is the ruler holder. Obviously that was designed for more of the bass boats as a replacement piece, but uh, I've always been a fan of, of having an onboard built-in ruler slide. And uh, that one is definitely the best one I've ever done to date. It's really nice to have it right there inaccessible because you're already going to be at the live well tank this live well tank this thing is nice it's cool but i'd be lying to you if i didn't say that it wasn't frankenstein okay originally i purchased our 18 gallon live well tank from tbnation.net which measures uh 12 inches wide 30 inches long and 12 inches tall making it 18 gallons i'm starting to become a fan of the little bit larger tanks so this is actually a 12 by 40 by 12 tall we took this over to frankie he added 10 inches to this thing it doesn't look super great but it's also a pain in the butt to do you can still see the stamp bottom from the original 30 inch side which this does allow all the water to drain out of it still which is really cool but it isn't one full whole brand new tank right we we took an existing tank modified it a little bit and i wanted that extra space for really for tournament reasons i just you know the more water i could get in here i felt like the better you can see one of my temperature sensors right here i have another one on the right hand side and then these are the G Juice Jizzer spray nozzles. So there's one over there and then I have one over here. This is the overflow for the Flowrite Premium Kit. This is my intake. Also, you can pull that in and out and that'll help you direct the water whichever way you need it to go. And then we have the drain down on the bottom, which just screws on and off. Uh, so if you need to clean anything, you can. And then we added two interior lights inside the tank. Wanted them closer to me um because if you end up putting them in the middle they kind of tend to blind you when you're opening up the lid so 
uh, with them being on the sides, you don't really see the actual light itself when you're opening the compartment. But with a custom tank came a custom lid. So this is actually one dry track that's split so it can have two lids on it. So we have dual lids here. I know I just complained about, you know, having more lids, more latches and stuff like that. So this did cost me extra money for a latch but i do like having the two lids because if i don't need to have both of them open then i won't i can just kind of make that opening area smaller than even with the 12 by 30 one it's a little loud i don't want to put a whole lot in here but you get the picture i love it no i love it i think it's cool just behind the live wall tank we have another seat base with the amp marine cap on it and then in the rear for anything to make sense inside there we gotta talk about this motor first. This is the brand new E-Propulsion Navy 6.0. The lower end is a little bit smaller. They shaved about 40 pounds off of this motor. Uh, they also went with a new prop. And powering this bad boy is one single powerhouse 48 volt, 173 amp hour battery. Okay, this thing is a beast. We had them specifically designed this battery for electric outboards. Chris worked with uh, Powerhouse directly to get this made. We're very proud of it. Very excited to be running it in my boat. Behind here, you can see my live well tank, but the tank got quad foamed, okay? And I did that to insulate the tank. One issue that I've been noticing with the aluminum tanks is they tend to get very hot. So hopefully foaming in that tank will, will help keep the temperature down inside of there, which is another reason why I put the temperature sensors in. A little accessory that I added was a, um, a toolbox. So this is just a dry box that I got from Harbor Freight for like 15 bucks or something like that and bought a little tool kit to put all the tools in there. I've also got some fuses, some extra bolts and things that I might need in case we ever run into anything. We have a 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump, auto and manual. That is the same pump that we offer in our safety kit. And then that is the pump system for the Flowrite Premium Kit. So you have the 800 gallon per hour rule pump. And then you have the three-way valve on the other side, your intakes, and then your drain run into the three-way valve. And then this one right here is pushing out. So it, it's what's actually filling the tank. This needs to be mounted as low as possible into your boat. Keep that in mind, this pump does not suck. It just pushes. Over there is the windshield wiper reservoir for the G-Juice. That's what's actually pumping the, the G-Juice into the tank. And then you can see up in this corner, that's the backside of the pod lights that we have right over here from flashlight so those are all things that you can see from the interior and then we also have the uh the controller for the flashlights that's for the rgbs um which are the led light strips that are underneath the interior of the gunnel and underneath the interior of the catwalks realistically we built this whole boat to test different electric outboards so that battery is probably going to stay standard in there. The motors are probably going to change from time to time. This hatch actually got modified by Frankie as well. It, it used to be just run straight across. And so we made the little cutouts here. Frankie welded everything back together. I really wanted that for the, the space for any of the wires coming through the transom in the hatch. So I now have an area to do that without losing a whole lot of deck space. On the rear transom cap, we have two very important items. Number one, this is the rear nav light. So this is what you're going to get uh, in the safety kit from TV Nation. And then we have the Rail Blazer GoPro pole. It comes with a base that has a locking mechanism. So you can just unlock this if you want to and pull, pull the whole thing out. Then you can install it back in there and lock it back down. And then we added on a USB charger here. So the GoPro will constantly stay charged. If I put a 256 gig memory card in there, that will last me an eight hour tournament and the power is actually put into the rear nav light. So if I don't have the rear nav light in and have my switch for the rear nav light on, the GoPro is getting battery. On the back back here, obviously we've talked about the flashlights. I will leave these linked in the description below, but they are bright as the sun as well. They are insanely bright. We also put a third flashlight in here right above the drain plug, which I call the rooster tail light. That's not what this light's called. I will leave it linked uh, in the description below. I think it's called like their carbon series or something. It's like a carbon fiber uh, light. And then I chose to add on this little, we made a little decal there for, uh, you know, this thing, this boat, I wanted to have like a military overland theme to it. 
and I think we, we nailed that pretty good. So all these important areas have little decals on them telling you what they are. And that's not, you know, that's a military theme, but I also, this is going to be a showboat for us. So I wanted you guys to be able to visually see where we have things and what they do. So, you know, we have the intake here, drain plug, obviously over there, you saw the pump in or the pump out and the uh, overflow. And over here, you're gonna see the build. So I wanted to do that for a few different reasons, but I think it really tied the whole look of everything together. My transducer is on the wrong side. Your transducer always needs to be mounted on the right-hand side. However, I had to run my cable down my left conduit pipe because my right one was full. So I need to get an extension from Garmin uh, for this so I can move my transducer over there because right now I'm getting some pretty bad interference uh, doing the side imaging. So we'll get that moved over to the other side here shortly. We have another flashlight on this side. These are just some regular tie down buckles from Home Depot. They're really nothing special. And then obviously the boat buckles here in the back that keep the rear of the boat tied down to the trailer. The other important thing we have here is the transom saver. So that really helps put this motor up when in transit. Um, and then we have the little connection there to the trailer with a removable pin. So and this thing can just drop down but overall i am extremely thrilled with how this boat turned out the whole project the the my ideas behind it i don't have many complaints on this at the moment i've taken it out twice and the only real complaint that i have on it right now at this time is that i wish this lid was just a little bit shorter inside of there a couple things i forgot to mention real quick though is the gunnels used to be rounded and i wanted to get rid of that rounded look so I took some framing material, cut it in a manner to where it would fit over the circular part of the gunnel, and then we welded the whole bead down all the way, sanded everything down to make it all flat flush and, and looking like a tracker basically, how they have their wide gunnels in there. That came out really good, but then we also needed to do that because we wanted to run interior LED light strips, and I had nowhere else to do that as far as mounting them in a manner where they glow down onto the deck uh, because of the rounded gunnel. So right up under there, we have an LED light strip. Those are flashlights, RGB, W light strips that are connected to the controller that's mounted back here in the rear. Those run the whole length of the boat on both sides of the interior of the gunnel. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up the walkthrough of this boat. Um, if there's anything that I missed, please let me know in the comment section. If you guys have any questions over anything, leave them in the comment section. If there's something that you want me to expand more on, please let me know. I, this is my personal boat and I have all the time in the world to do so and answer anything and everything that you guys have questions on uh, or ideas that you may have for your own boat. So please, in the comment section, let me know. We're also gonna be doing tournament videos out of this boat. But we're at the lake right now. Let's go ahead and put this boat in the water and uh, do some fishing.